Take 10 minutes out of your life, go look in the mirror, look yourself deep in the eyes, look at yourself, and decide, are you a fucking loser? Because if you're a fucking loser, you can go read and watch a bunch of shit about motivation to try and convince yourself to do a little bit of work. Or are you a winner? Because if you're a winner, you don't give a fuck how you feel. Work needs doing it must be done. The best option, the best thing to do is still to get up, be an adult, control your emotions, be stoic, and do the things you're supposed to do day after day. Laying in bed and doing nothing is never gonna be the best option. The best option is still to go to the gym, to work hard, to run your business, to be successful. I think the universe is absolutely and utterly giving. I've never seen anybody dedicate themselves to something completely and fair. I've never seen somebody eat right, go to the gym every day, train really hard, and not do much. I don't believe there's a person on the planet who pays attention, tries their best, is never lazy, is on time, works hard, has a mentor, and is giving it his all who isn't rich. I don't believe it. I think that if you do all those things, you're rich. And if you don't have any money, you're missing one of those key elements. Now, you can fool yourself and you can fool everyone else and you can pretend you're doing them, but if you're truly honest with yourself, am I finding people who are trying to teach me what I want to know? And am I trying? And the answer is fucking no every time. Feeling depressed is real. Depression as a disease, I do not subscribe to. The idea, of, I believe, that if you feel depressed, something is depressing you, and you should try your best to fix it, you should take control of your life and do your best. The idea, but they don't say that. They don't talk that. They say depression like it's this magic thing that comes out the sky and it gets in your brain, and you're sad no matter what. There's nothing you can do about it, and you need to only take pills. And I think that's a very bad way to look at the world, and that's a bad idea to subscribe to. And if you start to feel depressed, let's say your girl leaves you and you start to feel depressed, but you believe in the idea of depression, you're now gonna start diagnosing yourself as clinically depressed, yeah. self-hypnosing yourself into hypnotizing yourself into being clinically depressed. And, and it's amazing how you can speak things into existence. I cannot become depressed because I don't believe in it. So it doesn't matter. We're talking about the different positions on the chessboard, but if the rules of the game remain the same, regardless of the position you're still trying to win, you, you still have to do the same things. So does it even matter at this point? If you come along and say he's depressed because of X and he's depressed because of Y and he's depressed because of Z and the answer to all of them is still the same thing, then I don't give a fuck why you're depressed. All I know, what I will say as a matter of fact is this world is hyper competitive, especially as a man. Most men are walking through life and they don't realize that it's constant competition. Mm -hmm. I was driving here, even as I was driving here, I was looking out the window, there was looking at all these people just walking around, one of them had a fucking croissant, one of them was dressed like a dickhead because it's London. He thinks he's, he looks cool. He's a fucking moron. We've all seen them. Yeah, moron. Some of the dude just talking shit on the phone. Some other guy with headphones in waiting to be fucking murdered. Wouldn't even hear it coming. And all these NPCs, I'm just looking at them going, do they realize they're in endless, constant competition? Every single pound they want, someone else wants. Every single girl they want, someone else wants. There are people like me out here. I will destroy, you could get all 30 of them in a room and I will sit by myself and absolutely annihilate them in any single metric. And they're just sitting there just fucking floundering and wandering through life, unaware of how competitive the world is. Well, and whinging how unfair and it is. And whinging how unfair it is. And this is my point. If the world is truly that competitive, you do not have time to be depressed because it's a non-competitive mind state. Mm. You could be depressed for X, Y, Z, whatever. I'm not depressed. And I want the money you want, and I want the girl you want, and I want the status you want, and the car you want, and the house you want. And I'm going to get it, and you're fucking not. I, I truthfully believe that the universe is a very giving place. And I don't want to sound you know, airy fairy, but I truthfully believe that the universe is a giving place and that if you actually really want something, how much you want is how much you're prepared to sacrifice. So if you want half a million a year, you can definitely make that. And that level of stress you'll absorb for that money and the amount of uh, headache you'll go through, if that's the amount you're prepared to accept for a happy life you'll have. I think that you have to pre-decide, right? So even my level of wealth comes with enormous stress. Governments are after me. Like it's, it's, most people are not mentally prepared for the bullshit I go through. So the number one factor that's gonna decide how successful you are as a person is your ability to absorb stress, your stress level. The better you are dealing with stress, the more problems you can fix, the more money you're gonna make. So you have to decide where on that scale. Cause you could just be homeless and have no stress. <laughs> you could just, yeah, you could just be, you could be a brokey and be on the dole and just, you know, I'm broke, but nothing really troubles me. So you have to decide on that level where you want, how much stress you can possibly absorb as a man. And then if you truly want that level, you're gonna get it. I believe any man can make anything they want, depending. Any one of you here, I, I have no idea how much money you're making, but if you were to say, you know what, I'm throwing away my relationship, I'm throwing away my social life, I'm going ham, I'm going nuts, oh, I don't care what they do to me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna make it. You'd make a bunch of money, yes. but there's a bunch of garbage that comes with it. So you have to decide, right? Mm -hmm. I sit here as a billionaire and I sit and say, I will teach you how to make money online, anybody, 18 modern wealth creation methods, it's $49 a month and I will teach you. And people will sit there in their brutal arrogance and as a brokey with no money and go, yeah, but can he really teach me? 
I have everything you've ever fucking dreamed of. And I have all the money. You have nothing. And you're so arrogant that you believe you know more than me or that you can do it without me or that I don't know how to teach you. The arrogance of people is truly mind bending. If you know so much, why are you broke? You obviously don't know. If I want to learn how to box, I wouldn't walk into a boxing gym, find a guy who can box and go, yeah, you know, not bad, but can he really punch? Like this is how people think when it comes to money. You guys are all successful enough. You can sit there and say, look, I do X, Y, Z. I have X, Y, Z. You don't have it. So do you, do you want to learn how to play piano from the piano teacher? Or do you want to sit there as an arrogant brokey? Most people are brutally arrogant. And you can sit there and you can try and help them. And they're just so arrogant. They think, oh, I can do it myself or I'll work it out myself. I don't need help. And it's arrogance. And it keeps them at the bottom. Everything great that's happened to me in my life, someone taught me. I had a kickboxing coach. My dad was my chess coach. You get taught things. To sit there and think you're too, you're too good to learn. Well, this is the problem. Most people are broke. Most people are broke because they're arrogant. It's the truth. It's nothing to do with how stupid they are. They're just arrogant people. So if you love your family mm. and you love your last name and you're proud of yourself, mm. then you have a duty to be massively monumentally successful to show homage to your ancestors. I find it amazing there are people out here today who are going to sit and say, oh, I'm sad, I'm too depressed, I don't want to work hard. Do you understand that only 200 years ago there were peasants out working a field, starving, mm. surviving the Black Death, surviving the plague, struggling to exist just to reproduce so that 200 years later you can be the end of their bloodline for you to sit on your ass and do fucking nothing. Like, well, you're a fuck up. You're fucking up your entire bloodline of your entire ancestry. You owe these people things. You must, they went through hell for you to exist. You have a debt, you have a duty to pay. You have to be the best possible version of yourself. And the same to God. God loves people who try. God loves people who work hard. It's amazing if you try your very best all the time, what God will give you. Mm. He'll give it to you, anything you want. If you actually try, not, not convincing yourself to try, actually try, mm. they're different things. But yeah, I was instilled with this because from a young age, my dad said, you're a tape and tapes are the, the greatest people on the face of the planet. And there's gonna be a day I'm not here anymore and they're gonna talk about me because of how fantastic you are. So go do your fucking job. I said, yes, sir. And here I am. Uh, one of the most terrifying, but also gratifying things of, of, of life as a man is that we're all born relatively valueless. I don't think women are born that way. A woman, if she's born, especially if she's attractive, has an innate value. People just want her no matter what. But as a man, if you're not an important man, nobody gives a fuck about it and they're mm -hmm. never going to care. So you have to build yourself from the ground up. And that's scary for a lot of people, but it's also a massive opportunity. You can decide if you want to be a famous musician or a nice sensitive poet or a painter or a kickboxing world champion or a businessman. You get to decide on all the different characters in the video game. You can choose who do I want to be. And then if you actually try, actually try, you can become it. Isn't that amazing? You can wake up and go, you know what? I want to be this kind of guy. I knew who I wanted to be. I wanted to be the dude pulling up in the Lambo, three in the morning, gets out. Everyone's like, who is this big, strong, rich dude? I wanted to be that man, so I became it. Mm. And, and if you don't want that, if you want to go be a, a, a musician and play guitar and get a bunch of chicks and chill in Bali and smoke wheat, whatever, go, you can choose your yeah. character and build it. The problem is as well, it's difficult because the way that humans work and the way that we are, we've evolved as a species is that we don't really learn lessons unless they're learned the hard way. Yeah. I believe that unless a lesson has taught the hard way, you're not going to learn it. You can have so many near misses and people won't learn their lesson. Bro, you must know a guy who goes out there, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, nearly crashes his car, doesn't slow his ass down until he wrecks it. Yeah. Like This is how people are, right? So you need that pain for the lesson to sting enough to really genuinely go inside of your mind. And it's the same with everything. It's the same with driving a car or business. Truthfully, if you want to learn a lesson about business, you're going to have to suffer at some point, right? Mm -hmm. So we always say that most people are not successful with their first companies, X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. I get that. The truth is there's a lot of people who make a lot of money with their first company, but they just spunk it, act an idiot, and it all blows up in their face. And that's, the, and that's how you get the discipline on your fourth company that when you have three million in the bank, you just leave it there. You know, it's, yeah. and, don't, and don't be done with it. So you need, to, you need to go through some pain. You need to experience some negative things. You need to have, to, uh, to a degree, some trauma to really even learn any lessons so, so that you make sure it doesn't happen again. I really think that, that humans are stupid enough to only learn the hard way. That's kind of how it works. The, the saying, if you know what you have, you ain't got much, that is completely yeah. I don't have a clue how much money. When I was broke, I knew exactly how much money I had. I had 117 pounds in the Nat West, and that was it. I'm poor, rent paid, I ain't got nothing else. When I was broke, I knew exactly how much I had. But now I'm at a point where it gets really difficult to truly measure how much money I have. Because you have cash, okay, that's easy. Even then, once once you have a healthy respect for money, once you get past a certain amount of money, you don't need it in the bank. Like, there's, there's no point in me having 50M liquid in the bank. Why? What, what am I going to buy? 
You know, you're like, as long as you have whatever you have in the bank to, to run around the world with, you have enough. So you try and put that money to use, right? You buy assets, X, Y, Z. I don't believe in motivation as a concept. I believe in discipline and divine purpose. People who ask about motivation are basically saying, I don't feel like doing this. How do I feel like doing this? And the answer is, the true red pill is, you're never going to feel like doing it all the time. Sometimes you're not going to want to do it. It doesn't matter what it is. If I can tell you to go fucking surfing or skateboarding or driving a Ferrari every day, there's going to be days you wake up where you just don't feel like doing it, no matter how fun it is. That's life. But if you do not do it and you don't feel like doing it, you will never perform against a person who does it regardless of how they feel. You have to make a decision. Forget about the idea of motivation. Forget about the concept of it. Throw it away and decide who you are. And this is a genuine task for you all to complete. Go look in the mirror, look into your own eyes and decide, am I a fucking loser? I win. Because if you're only going to do what you feel like doing, you are a loser. That is the definition of a loser. A man who only feels, does what he feels like doing, is going to lose against the people who perform regardless. If you lose, what are you? A fucking loser. I decided I was a winner, and I knew what it took to win. To win, I have to perform day after day, so I decided I'm going to do this every day, regardless of how I feel. Some days I'll enjoy it, some days I won't, some days it'll be fun, some days it won't. But I'm going to do it every single day to the best of my ability. I will not allow my emotional state to affect my actions. That's what winners do. And you've agreed to fight the 13th of July. That day comes around. You might feel like fighting. You might feel like kicking someone's ass. You might not feel like fighting. You might be a little bit sick. But it's the day the arena's booked. You have to fight. So you don't get to say, well, I don't feel like it now. You don't get to lose and tell people why I didn't feel like it on that day. You just have to do it. You have to be good enough on your worst day to beat your opponent on his best day. It might be your worst day, it might be his best day. You still have to fight, you still have to win. That's the game. So people ask me about motivation, I make it very clear, I say this, motivation has nothing to do with any of this. This is about who you are. It's about your purpose, your divine purpose given to you, dictated by God. Are you the kind of person who lives a life worth living or are you a fucking loser? Now, watching this, there's gonna be some of you which fall into each category. You're not all winners, you're in the right place. But some of you are probably still lazy losers. That's the reality. I made the choice to do it all. For 10 years of my life, I was never comfortable because I put myself through hell. I put myself through hell because I decided to throw comfort away. Men think it's okay to just become comfortable now. You're not supposed to be comfortable. You were never evolved to be comfortable. You're supposed to be uncomfortable. If you were born 100 years ago and it was the 1920s, you'd be in some ditch in Northern France, living in the fucking mud, hoping not to get killed by a random sniper in some bullshit war you barely understand for four years. <laughs> then you'd come home and hope your wife hasn't been bombed. That's the world. The world has become ex exceptionally easy for a lot of men. It used to be a diff different place. Most men were cotton fodder. Most of us would have ended up in wars dying for fucking no reason. And me as a man, when I put myself through hell, when I have had such exacting, such stringent standards for myself, why would I then have less exacting, stringent standards on the people I meet? Damn. Why would I put myself through hell to be me and then meet someone who didn't put themselves through hell and then treat them like my equal? No, fuck you. I suffered when you didn't. So you're not my equal because you decided not to suffer. You have enjoyed comfort when I haven't, and that's fine, but don't expect me to look at you as my equal because you're not. I'll stack your fucking neck. I can never be depressed if I never slow down. Speed is extremely important. Speed defies gravity. How, do, how does a plane fly through the air and defy gravity? Speed. It's moving too fast to fall. If you're always attacking life, if you're always doing things, if you're always making more money, if you're always traveling the world, doing this, doing that, new car, here, there, new podcast, meeting James English, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> you know, if you're always doing things all the time, unhappiness can't catch you. But I also know that speed is a is a fantastic way to be happy all the time. I'm always looking forward. I'm always looking forward to something. I wake up every day excited. Oh, I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. I'll go do this today. And I very much live my life in a frame of no, I have to do this. It's very much a, I get to do this. There's another thing that a lot of people make a mistake with when I talk to them. Oh, I have to go to work today. Change your language. I get to go to work today. Imagine you had no job. It'd be worse, right? Because otherwise you wouldn't be working. So you get to go to work. Oh, I have to fix the car. At least you have a car. You get to fix your car. Most people don't bother. Oh, I have to go get the kids. You get to go get the kids because you have these beautiful children who love you. If we were still in the animal kingdom, the lions that you see on TV, they weren't just born big lions. They had to fight other lions. They had to fight to get that antelope. They had to fight other animals, hyenas, jackals. They had to fight to be the boss. 
We live in a comfortable world now where people think, oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. But you know what? To some degree, it does matter. It does matter, and I'm gonna tell you who it matters to. It matters to your soul, and it matters to God. I stand in the mirror with a pure heart. I know I am the best version of me that could possibly ever exist. I know that God is proud of me. There's nothing that God hates more than sloth and laziness. If God were to create a man, and that man were to sit around and do fuck all, God will frown upon you. It's why you're never lucky. If you're listening to this and you think I'm never lucky, I'll tell you why, because God, dislikes you because you're fucking lazy start to work start to show god the beauty of his own creations you'd be amazed how lucky you'll become wow. god is unhappy with these people and inside their hearts they're unhappy we talk about depression anxiety all those things you mentioned earlier really on this podcast that comes from self-loathing you loathe your own weakness you loathe your own laziness this is what all of these things are i don't feel depression how can i feel depression when i'm the most powerful version of me that i could ever fucking be how can i feel depression when I could squeeze my own hand hard enough to break my own bones? How can I feel depression when I've smashed and destroyed 68 people's faces in front of me, men who thought they could test me in fair combat? How can I feel depressed? It's impossible. This is what the beautiful thing about being a man is, right? It's because being a man is difficult. It's so much harder than being a woman. Being a man is hard mode. But just like you play the video game on hard mode, when you win, you get a higher score. There is no better existence than a top tier male. I think that most people failing in life know very well they're failing. And it doesn't matter what avatar you decide to absorb or who you decide to be. You can decide to be it and you know true in your heart if you're giving 100% of your energy towards becoming or not. It doesn't matter if you want to become a famous musician, it doesn't matter if you want to become a bodybuilder, it doesn't matter if you want to become a pro fighter, it doesn't matter what you want to be, you know in your heart if you're actually trying. You have to decide what you want to be and try and become it. And a lot of the people who are genuinely unhappy or miserable in their hearts know they're not trying. I actually believe, and this is another thing I'll say, I believe the universe is very giving. I think the universe and God himself is very giving. I've yet to meet somebody in my, all my years who's genuinely giving 100% of themselves day after day, doesn't snake anyone, firm handshake, look you in the eye, doesn't lie to nobody, and tries 100% and doesn't get what they want. I've never seen it. Every single person who doesn't have what they want, there's something in their story that doesn't quite add up. I've yet yeah. to see some guy who, have you ever seen a guy who eats right, who trains his ass off, and never misses a gym session ever? Not right. It's just, that's the way the universe works, right? So if you're truly about it, you're truly trying your absolute best, you're going to do it. And I, that's what I believe. I believe the universe is extremely giving. So when I meet somebody and they go, I really wanted this and I don't have it, I say, you didn't really want it. I, I think we're here to struggle. I think we're here to go through pain. That's, that's so I wake up each day and go, what can I, what can I attack? What problem can I solve? And, and look at history. Why did Genghis Khan wake up and want to conquer the whole world? Why did Napoleon conquer the world? Why did Alexander the Great conquer the just world? Just, you, you just wake up and just say, give me this. Give me that. I want all of it. I need to, yeah. there's an army there. They're really big. It's we're better. Yeah. It's intrinsic. Yeah. You need to go and conquer. That's, that's the purpose of life. Because yeah. if you don't struggle, you don't learn. Yeah. God created us to learn and understand ourselves and understand other people and understand the world. And what I say earlier, I said that you don't learn a lesson where you don't appreciate something without, without pain. Without pain. Mm. So you have to struggle to learn anything. Mm. There's only two ways to learn things, the hard way or the harder way. If you're smart, you can learn the hard way. But in my experience, 99% of the planet only learn the hardest possible way. If, it's, if the lesson's even 85% effective, they'll make the same mistake. Only when they completely decimate and destroy an element of their life do they sit there and go, oh, oops, now I get it. No. That's how it goes. How much money you make. If you're a bad person, you're not gonna feel happy. I don't care how much money you make. If you snake people or lie to people or do bad to people, you're never gonna feel happy true deep in your heart. True in your heart, we're intrinsically designed to do right and do good. And that's something that God gave us. And when you have that, you understand that that's more important than anything else. So these people who are uh, up here promoting degeneracy, saying, you know, take Percocets and bang girls and drink vodka and you're gonna be, you know, gonna be great. I, I drink, I'm not saying I don't drink, but that's not my message, right? Yeah. And those people are never truly happy and, they, and they're trying to purport that and convince people to do the same so that the whole populace is never truly happy. And like I said, now we go in circles. We've already discussed why yeah. they don't want us to be happy. Exactly. So yeah. that, you, that's why. And you want to feel content and you want yeah. to feel stable inside of yourself. You need to live true to God. And I'm not saying you can't drink a little bit of alcohol or not party or not have a little bit of fun. You have to be a good person. You have to balance life. You have to balance life. You have to be a good person overall. I know I'm a good person. And yeah. the Matrix is trying to convince the world that I'm not. That just proves even further that I'm a good person. The world we now live in today, when the mass media sh machine is trying to tell you somebody is evil, you can know pretty well that that person is probably good. Yeah. And vice versa. 
Like there's a reason they are trying so hard to convince people to ignore their own ears. People listen to my message and go, that's a positive message. And the media is changing going, no, it's not he's positive. positive, he's bad. They're trying to brainwash you. I don't believe in the societal paradigms in which they have tried to construct this idea of happiness. I don't believe or subscribe to the way that happy and sad is currently un understood by the masses of the population. I think if you are anything less than absolutely yeah. distraught, you are happy, you're a version of happy. It's like saying gray is a version of black, right? No matter how light the gray is, you can still call it a version of black. And unless you've gone through an event, which hopefully doesn't happen too often, like the passing of a family member or something yeah. that's truly destructive and detrimental to your mindset, besides these events, which hopefully only happen a few times in your life, you should be happy. If you're not crying or paralyzed in silence due to the absolute magnitude of a detrimental circumstance or the absolute magnitude of a negative event, then you are a version of happy. So so I am always happy is the short answer. I don't believe in not being happy. I don't believe in not saying to myself I'm happy. I'm always a version of happy. And this chasing, this idea of chasing happiness and always being concerned and preoccupied with how happy you are is actually the biggest mistake that a lot of people make, I think, in the world today. Especially men who wake up and go, oh, I don't really feel happy, so I need to get happier. And that's how they end up down a yeah. hedonistic path of drugs or alcohol or chasing gambling, pleasure. chasing pleasure. I don't care how I feel. Yeah. I don't care if I feel happy or sad. It doesn't really affect what I do each day. I do the exact same things. I act the exact same way. I, it does, I don't care. Yeah. It doesn't, I, doesn't, I don't put weight to the significance of the emotion. So I always consider myself a happy person, but if I woke up and I was slightly less happy one day than another, it wouldn't affect anything I do and I wouldn't put any relevance to it. I'm, yeah, hu yeah. I'm human and that's life. And so yeah, am I any happier now that I, am, that I have hundreds of millions of dollars than before I was broke? Yeah. But I was never unhappy. I'm, I'm, I'm the same state that I was then, that I am now. I have work to do and I will do it. It's just as simple as that. Well, also there's no light without dark and there's no joy without pain. You can't have a rainbow without a little rain. Exactly. And no matter how hard you chase pleasure and happiness, there's going to be dips and troughs in between. There's going to be come downs and downtrends. And you're going to have the juxtaposition between that time you were laughing your head off and acting giddish like a child and the time that you feel depressed as such. And I think it's much better to just adopt a very disciplined, stoic mindset. I'm always the same base level of happy regardless. If I lost all of my money today, I would be the same happy. Mm -hmm. If my net worth quadrupled, I'd be the same happiness. Yeah. As long as I'm alive, which is a struggle, unfortunately in the current climate, but as long as I'm alive and the people I, I care about and love are alive, and as long as I get, as long as God gives me the honor of doing my duties and providing for the people I care about, as long as I get to wake up and know that there's a whole bunch of people in the world who need me and I get to work hard to please them and do good for society and good for the world, then I'm I'm a vessel of God and I'm happy, I'm happy enough to survive. That's, that's all I look at it as. I don't ever consider how do I feel? That doesn't cross my mind. I have things to do. I have things to do. <laughs> You're too busy to think about that. I'm too busy. I'm, I have things to do every single day. I have very important things to do. And how I feel really is not going to affect how I complete those tasks. Right. And I, I, when I speak to men, they say I'm unhappy or I need to be happier. I think that's absolutely the wrong frame of life. You're a man. You have duty. You have honor. You have things you should be doing regardless of how you feel. And the people who are perma-obsessed with happiness or sadness, I just think it's the wrong paradigm to view the, the lens of life. I yeah. think you should get up and do what needs to be done. You're distracted and you're self-obsessed. When you're sad, you're sitting at home, me, 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 me. It makes you very selfish. Yeah. You don't care about your community when you're sad. Yeah. You don't care about your country when you're sad. You don't care about the injustices of the world when you're sad. You don't care about trying to actually go and make the world a better place because you're too busy thinking about yourself. So they want you miserable, semi-depressed, sad, unhappy, so that you can sit at home and accept them doing whatever they want for the planet and other people yeah. without ever talking or standing up or doing the right thing. If you're happy uh, and motivated, you're going to be far more likely to fight against injustices. So the fact that I have mass influence and I can just make people feel better is a threat to them. They don't want me to make people feel better. They talk about men's mental health and pretend to care, but when I come along and genuinely help and, and stop people from committing suicide, they delete me. They don't want that. They want everybody semi-depressed. They want you miserable. They want you distracted so that you're too busy crying your eyes out in a room somewhere or sitting in yeah. deep thought worrying about this girl who left you so yeah. they can just continue to run the world. We're currently in a fight of good versus evil. Mm -hmm. It's it's genuinely that serious. This is a, whether it's the Bible or the Quran or any superhero movie, this is the battle of good versus evil and anybody who's sitting who doesn't see that who doesn't see that every con armed conflict on the planet the conflict for our minds the way the matrix is attempting to control us 
This is genuinely a battle of God versus Satan, and if you think that you can just sit idly by while these two titans go to war, and you're not going to end up caught up in the crossfire, then you're absolutely and utterly ignorant. At best, a coward at worst, and I think it's most likely cowardice. We're in the middle of the greatest battle that humankind has ever faced, and unless people stand up and actually try and fight hard for good and for God. The reason I talk about not to tell people about it. It's to make it clear to people who are complaining about their own life that the bad things that are happening are what you need to become the man that you want to be. I can't talk about women because I'm not. I actually think trauma is terrible for women because of masculine life. They become cold and that's not attractive. Right? We want feminine, pure, protective women. I don't want a woman to ever go through anything bad in her life. A man should go forward and protect her because I think that's how she's her best self as a woman. But I think to be your best self as a man is the absolute opposite. Someone emails, this has happened to me. I'm like, good. No, what do you mean good? It's terrible. How else are you going to become important? How else are you going to find endless fire to get up and struggle in the face of the competition that's out here? How else are you ever, you're going to do all that with a nice Christy life? If any man's honest with himself, think about the biggest transformative stages in your life. Think about the times you got the most work done. It was a bad part of your life. You were heartbroken or you know, you lost a house or broke or whatever. That's when you did shit. When everything was fine, when the woman's still sucking, the, the mortgage is paid, dinner's on time. It's kind of doop de doop de doo little by little, do a little bit of work, do a little bit of relax. But the big events come from trauma. This is it. So it's a cheat code. It's a cheat code to climb the mountain. So when I get a message from you, my wife left me and devastated. I understand. I completely understand how hard it can be to lose a woman that you've given your entire life to. You've been done so many nice things. And then because of one thing you did, her innate and absolutely insane level of ungratefulness has turned her bitter and she now talks to you like she hates you. Over one thing you've done, after thousands of efforts showing how dedicated you are to her. And even now that you're prepared to die for her, she doesn't give a shit about I understand that pain. Well, my answer is good. It's still good. Now, to take all of that pain, instead of being, and then you're gonna become the kind of person. Why does it have to be quick? Why does it have to be easy? Why do you think life is all quick and easy? Why can't it be hard and difficult? Why can't you suffer? Because suffering is what gives it value. If everyone had a six pack and it's quick and easy, then it wouldn't be valuable, would it? If everyone walked around with a quick a six pack and they got it easily, then no one would give it. The whole point is that it's difficult to get. Value is linked to difficulty. If you want something that is valuable, you need something which is difficult to obtain. You shouldn't be thinking about quick and easy. You should be thinking about hard suffering pain, going through it. That's what you should be thinking about. This is going to be hard, but I'm going to do it anyway. Because when it is done, then everyone's going to know that I went through something difficult. Nobody, absolutely nobody, gives a f about it as much as you're going to have to do it. Nobody cares about it as much as they need to care to fix your life. But nobody is going to come to your bed, drag you out of bed, drag you to a job, force you to work hard. You are never going to have any of the things you want, you do not get them yourself. The only person is going to make you happy and live a life that you want to live with me. Nobody's going to do it for you. People say, Tate, what motivates you? And I find that extremely, I think that's a stupid question. I was a four-time kickboxer in the town. For 12 years, I trained five hours a day, six days a week. And I was motivated to train only about 25% of the time. The rest of the time I went because I am disciplined. If I wake up and I'm unhappy, I will do the exact same things as if I am. I will go to the gym the same. I will work the same. How I feel has no impact on how I live my life. We're grown-ups and we have responsibilities and we have problems and we have pressure. And you don't necessarily have to be happy to perform, you know? And, and happiness will come at the end of the performance anyway. But if your number one goal as a man, if your number one uh, mission in life is just to be happy, that's going to be an extremely vacuous existence. You're not going to be a man of substance. Your ability to deal with stress, the amount of stress you can deal with as an individual is directly correlated to your success. If you can deal with stress all day, you're going to be successful. If you collapse under stress, you're not going to be successful. There's no way to the top without stress in life. But there is a massive correlation between success in life and stress levels. The more stress you can tolerate, the better your life's going to be. One of the only things in this world you can control is your state of mind. You can't control the weather, you can't control other people, you can't even control your health. One of the very few things in the world you have genuine control of is your state of mind. If you can't control that, then you're just a feather in the wind.
<laughs> yeah, and that's and that's the thing about the way I talk and the things I say. Some people find it inspirational, and some people are are upset by it, and allows and their ego prevents them from learning from it. Yeah. But it's the kind of people who are really genuinely upset by what I say are the kind of people who can't truly learn anything and become successful. In it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I obviously know what I'm talking about to some degree. So if 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 Mike Tyson walks in here and tells you he's going to teach you how to box and says you can't fight your pussy, if that upsets you, then you can't learn, right? It's Mike Tyson. Just shut up and listen. <laughs> if, if if someone Richard Me comes along and says Andrew, you don't know shit. You're a dumb ass and you're a brokey. I'm going to sit there and go, okay, maybe I'm a brokey. Elon, tell me something. Right? I'll listen. But if you're going to sit there and go, don't call me names and then I'm not listening, you're never going to get anywhere, right? You don't become you don't become the master unless you're very, very good at being a student. And I've always been very, very good at knowing when to shut up. If you're going to sit there and go, I don't want to work more than an hour a day. Well, the guy who does want to work more than an hour a day is going to be, and no matter how smart you are, there's always a smart dude who's doing the same smart work you are for more hours than you're doing it. That's just the nature of the game. You get up off your ass and work first. Because there's no such thing as completely, truly, 100% Passive. You're gonna have to check. You have to maintain. You're gonna have to find a new tenant in that bubble. You're gonna have to make sure that DeFi crypto farm you're in doesn't go to zero. It's not a bubble. Yeah. You're always gonna have to keep an eye on it, right? But the idea that people with no money are already so concerned with making money without work is amazing to me.